We support faculty in translating their courses into the online environment. And we use a learning management system called Blackboard. But we also train on a variety of technologies and we get faculty comfortable with navigating and facilitating an online course because it is different than an on-ground course. So many of our faculty did go online. Many of them built more than one class, which is actually rare. Most people, when they go online, are only doing a one-to-one. -one. I'm learning the online development program with one class. Some of these individuals were doing that and then building up curriculum for online teaching. Um, I think that they did a tremendous job. Marisha, who is new to our group since last summer, um, she is bringing on an accessibility component to the courses. The national statistic is that 19% of undergraduate students have a diagnosed disability. Everything that we're doing through our faculty training is teaching faculty about the types of disabilities that may be out there, the best practices for incorporating content in a way that uh, would be most beneficial to all learners. At the end of 2020, when we went online, I don't know that I did a good job, but I knew my students and I worked so hard, like seeing them one-on-one -on -one and in person to like dig them through the school year. It has been hard. It was a huge adjustment for me to go online. It feels like the kind of things, the kind of mistakes you make your first semester, two semesters, three semesters teaching until you get, you know, you get enough knowledge and that's what, that's what this has felt like. It's like a total disruption as though, as though I'm back to year one. The one thing I always want to remind people is when people are getting really kind of down or they're like, you know, this was a tough semester or teaching online, that's what normal first time some faculty who teach online go through. We just have them all going through it at the same time. Um, some of those things of where they're just unfamiliar with the way the process is of how they want to facilitate an online class, which they experienced the first time they taught in a face-to-face -face environment. It's a little strange for me because I have a background in instructional design and I've and with a focus in in online. Uh, that was that was what I pursued for my masters and. Um, Strangely enough, like being able to put it to use uh, in my courses has been an interesting uh, sort of ironic uh, um, uh, approach to teaching because I, I, you know, considered myself a face to face uh, instructor. I, I always, you know, excelled in the classroom being able to just be there with students and, and, and build a rapport with them that way. And, and uh, so uh, as far as being difficult from a technical sense, uh, not too difficult, but from a sort of like a, a teaching philosophy sense, it's, it's been um, very difficult, I would say. One of the things many of the faculty I've been working with, and I know Kyle and Marisha as well, they offer Zoom sessions where they'll have students come together and talk through um, topics of the week or questions that they're all having or whatever the content is and um, that way they can all build that community in an, a virtual sense. Try to get into the heads of the students and and their worries and the parts that they're of this that they're struggling with and try to try to go okay well if I were in that position what would what would what would I be feeling and 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 you know how do I how do I make things a little bit easier for them? I know some of the people who are, have already been online are rocking this whole online thing already. And I'm so proud of them and I admire them so much. And some people who are new to online just seem to have gotten it and I'm in awe of them. And um, you know, I'm really glad for the help I had. Kyle, Kyle Krause has really been amazing in helping me through all of this and I'm just really grateful. I think that they've all done a tremendous job and yes there's ranges of people who know technology but the vast amount of people who are not only saying i want to learn this because i want to be better for my students they've built amazing activities and created videos hundreds of videos teaching accessibly with both synchronous and asynchronous video and then also the framework of universal design for learning which encourages faculty to teach to a broader range of students. They're not preparing content for a specific student. They're preparing their course in a way that 
regardless of which student was to enroll in their course, it would be already accessible as much as possible. Students can take that content or those lectures, listen to them, read them, watch them. Um, so those modalities of learning are reinforced. Having office hours virtually, um, I think that people have really kind of pulled together and done the best that they could um, to present their classes um, virtually when they weren't anticipating doing this anytime in the near future. One of the things that I've heard faculty say they'd like to take post-pandemic and have that in the classroom and continue to have aspects of their course done online, um, including presenting materials, but presenting context and concepts before students step into an on-ground or even a low-density classroom, which is what's happening now um, to some extent during the pandemic.